Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers. We've had a bit of a heat wave this week, so it's been really hot. I've been really busy fixing lawnmowers and fixing stuff around the house. So I haven't had too much time to really make too many videos. That's why you see shorter videos posted on my YouTube channel lately. And I just want to show you a t-shirt that I got from Bryant from tradestyles.com. That's his company. What he does is printing and web design and stuff like that, logo design as well. He sent me a t-shirt. I'm wearing one like this right now. And I'll crack this one open. And there it is. And I also got a mouse pad. I actually needed a new mouse pad, so that's perfect. And sometimes when you work in a shop, your hands are dirty, so the black color is good because it won't show the dirt as much. And by the way, this is a thick mouse pad. These are the ones that I really like. I also got a few pens from him as well. And I also got a shiny business card holder. As you can see, the camera is showing inside of it. And here's one of his business cards. It's got a nice, cool, shiny thing on it. I think it's called the foil accent. By the way, if you guys need some business cards printed up or designs, check him out. His prices are pretty well unbeatable. I've checked other places online as well. There's his phone number and if you go to his website, you'll see some contact information via email. And I didn't realize there's stuff on the back of his card here as well. So again, go check out his website and thanks to Bryant for sending this stuff to me. It was actually a gift from him, I didn't buy these, so anytime anybody sends me anything that is in the gift format, I will show it on the Q&A videos. I'm going to get right into questions, and the first question I got is a YouTuber asked me, what do I think about the conversion kits for generators? So what this guy wants to do is convert his gasoline generator to a natural gas generator. Well, I think it's a great idea because you're going to have an unlimited supply of fuel to power up your generator. Usually you're going to have to pipe it into the natural gas pipe that comes from your house or your shop. And for liability and insurance purposes, you will have to hire a gas fitter to hook it up for you because if something happens and your house burns down or your shop, your insurance won't cover that. So there is a bit of a drawback there because gas fitters are not cheap to get to do stuff for you. Another drawback for me would be that if I wanted to take my generator somewhere else and that there wasn't a natural gas hookup, I couldn't use it. But on the upside, if you're going to leave your generator stationary at home and you have a second one for mobile purposes, then that's awesome because you'll never run out of fuel. The only time you'd run out of natural gas is if there was an earthquake and the pipes broke in the ground. The other plus side of natural gas is it burns a lot cleaner, the plugs will not get dirty, the engine will stay a lot cleaner inside as well, and the fumes aren't as toxic as gasoline. So that's about all the tips I have for this today. If you have extra tips, please post them under the video. Also an update on the mopeds you saw in the last Q&A, I got the Honda moped running, it's gone as you can see. What was wrong with that Honda moped is that a wire was disconnected near the flywheel and also the spark plug wasn't good anymore. Now I'm working on this one as I get time and this one has no spark. I want to thank all you guys for sending in the parts manuals and the websites to get parts for this scooter as well, or this moped I may say. Now another question I got the other day is in regards to quantum lawnmower engines and somebody asked me if there's a gasket between the air breather cover and the carburetor. Well, there is a gasket and it's part number 795629 and it's very important that you have that gasket there between the air breather assembly and the carburetor or else your primer may not work properly. And you can also buy a less expensive aftermarket version of this gasket. It's Oregon part number 49-069. What I'm going to do is put a link under the video to where you can buy one of these directly online. You can also buy a 10 pack of these. It's nice to have a bunch around because you often have to replace these. Now another question I often get is what kind of spark plug goes in these steel grass trimmers? I think I've showed this before in a previous Q&A, but anyways, it's an NGK BPMR 7A spark plug, and it's pretty well the same for these little chainsaws here as well. And I think if you want to use a Champion spark plug, it's going to be an RCJ6Y. But I usually use NGKR BPMR 7A. What I have in my hands is a lawn tractor carburetor, but the question I'm going to answer today is not specifically to these carburetors. Some people are asking me, why is there a piece of foam here on the shaft right here? Well, that piece of foam there is to trap dust and dirt 
they've put it there because they know that the engine is being used in a very dusty environment. For a lawn tractor, for example, you know there's going to be a lot of grass dust and sand and different things blowing up in the air. And by having the foam here, it stops the dust and sand from getting inside the shaft, dirtying up your carb, or wearing out the shaft prematurely. Sometimes when you buy a new carb kit, you're going to see a small piece of foam and you might wonder where does this go? Well, this is exactly where it goes. Now to remove it, you can just break it off, but if you want to put a new one on, you may have to remove the two screws here, lift up the shaft, and put it in. Sometimes you can slide it over the mechanism here, but you may rip it. Usually a good factory repair manual will recommend that you replace the butterfly screws, or at least put some Loctite back on them. My next question is one that I've answered previously in Q&As, especially last summer. And the question is, why is my lawn tractor blowing smoke like crazy? Well, my answer to that is that your head gasket is probably blown. I see this happen often on single cylinder Briggs engines on lawn tractors. Usually the gasket blows between the pushrod galley and the cylinder, and then all the oil seeps into the cylinder. It's gonna burn an incredible amount of oil, and the smoke is gonna be just like a forest fire. You actually have to see these burn oil to believe it. It's just insane. And here's a gasket that had that problem. As you can see, it's damaged in between the galley and the cylinder. And all the oil runs across here and causes major oil burning issues. Now, since I've been very busy this week and I don't have much time to edit video lately, I'm just going to show you a few things in the shop here that I've been working on and videos that you can expect in the future. What I have here on the table is a 13.5 horsepower single cylinder Briggs engine that blew a rod. You can see all the parts here, so I'm going to make a brief video of this in the near future and then post it up on YouTube so you can see exactly the damage on this engine. Right here I have a rototiller with a blown engine as well. I'll be making a short video on it and posting it throughout the summer. This is an overhead valve engine and one of the valves is stuck open. The guy was pulling and pulling and pulling and it wouldn't start so it's easy to figure out why once you take the engine apart. And I've got my blade balancer posted up on my wall here that I got from discountonlineparts.com. I'll be making a tool review video on this tool as well this summer. It's very handy to have. I think that anybody who does small engine repairs seriously should have one of these. Again I'll post the link under the video to where you can buy one of these directly online. Also here I have a Toro Personal Pace lawnmower. I got it from a guy on a trade for something, so it's just basically sitting here till I get time to fix it. And in this box over here is a Tecumseh lawnmower engine. This engine had no compression whatsoever. And when I took it apart I realized that the whole cylinder scratched. So I assumed that the piston would be scratched and scored inside as well. So it's no wonder that this engine wouldn't start as well. So in my shop right now I have one blown up Tecumseh engine and two Briggs and Stratton engine. Usually it's the other way around. I'll have more blown up Tecumseh engines than Briggs. So that'll wrap it up for today's Q&A. A special thanks to all of you who have sent me monetary donations. Also a thanks to Bryant from Tradestyles.com. Make sure to check out his website. Have yourselves a great weekend and you'll see me in my next Q&A in two weeks.